We need goals because they help keep the world uh, together and uh, at least roughly on track because we argue about so many things, agreeing on a few things is extremely important. My own experience uh, during the past decade as a special advisor to UN Secretary General, uh, first Kofi Annan, now Ban Ki-moon, on the Millennium Development Goals has really uh, convinced me that having global goals to fight poverty, hunger, and disease has really mobilized action. Uh, it's opened eyes. Uh, it's uh, uh, alerted people to issues that they might not have thought about. Uh, it's energized people. It said, oh, we can fight poverty. And, and not only can we do it, it should do it, but there's some very practical things to do. It's reoriented governments. It's helped development agencies uh, such as CETA or uh, U, uh, USAID or the World Bank or DFID and others uh, also be better partners, more effective partners uh, with uh, low-income countries, with governments, and with civil society. So I'm a big fan of uh, such goals. And I think the time is absolutely right for goals on sustainable development. Uh, we had, for example, Agenda 21 in the uh, Rio conference in 1992, but Agenda 21 is hundreds of pages. Uh, it's a, a technical manual that only the technicians and the specialists ever knew about, uh, whereas the broad public society did not get engaged, it did not say, this is for us, this is what it means. And because of that, I think in part, the three big treaties that were agreed in 1992 in Rio on climate change, on desertification, on biological diversity, never had the broad public support behind them uh, that energized uh, uh, a generation to say, these are our objectives. This is what we need to do on sustainable development. We should have done it 20 years ago. We need to do it now. Uh, Things are more urgent than they were in 1992. We lost 20 years in effect to change the direction of uh, the world economy in, in crucial areas and, and our own awareness and behavior. I think sustainable development goals in some form can help us uh, to get back on track. Science, uh, of course, is fundamental to our needs and success right now. Uh, and science uh, is doing at least three things. Uh, science uh, is uh, telling us what the risks are. Uh, so it is uh, absolutely uncovering and reading the Earth's history uh, to say we are in dangerous territory. Uh, whenever the carbon concentration has been at the level it is today, the sea level has been several meters higher uh, than it is today. Uh, that is the work of brilliant science uh, pieced together uh, through uh, many kinds of evidence to read the planetary history. Uh, science is showing how our ecosystems function and how Earth processes work. So this is a second dimension. What are the dynamics at play right now? Uh, and of course, climate modeling, uh, ecosystem modeling, uh, human physical uh, interaction system modeling is uh, absolutely fundamental. Uh, much of this science is quite new. Uh, it's hard. Uh, it's uh, thrilling, uh, the kinds of breakthroughs that are being made. The third area of science is as a uh, foundation for the technological uh, choices that we have. And here I would say engineers, uh, in, in my view, uh, and defined broadly, have a completely central, fundamental role to play in helping us get this right. So in the Sustainable Development Solutions Network, there will be scientists, but there will be lots of engineers. Uh, engineers on energy systems, uh, engineers on hydrology and water management, uh, engineers uh, on uh, uh, transport technologies, engineers uh, in their role as agronomists, how to grow food, engineers uh, in public health, because public health is a kind of engineering field. Uh, we call it a medical, it is a medical field, but it is uh, applying systematic scientific knowledge uh, to uh, population scale solutions. And so in this sense, uh, this is a third role of science, but I'd call it science and technology, and I'd call it science, scientists and engineers uh, to sh help us on solutions and a broader range of solutions than, than we have had up until now. I think that one of the things I want the Sustainable Development Solutions Network to do is to help uh, champion pre-commercial 
technologies, at least to get them tested, to see what can work, to get cities to say, yeah, we'll try smart grid. It's not exactly uh, known yet, but we want to be pioneers in this area, or we want to be pioneers in self-driving vehicles, or we want to be pioneers in, uh, in uh, all renewable uh, uh, energy systems and so forth. And I'm finding that a lot of places in the world, the mayors, for example, or develop, uh, the, the regional development leaders are coming to me saying, we want to be part of this network and we want to try some of these things early on. That's extremely exciting. First, we need to reach goals. This is uh, no simple matter. The Millennium Development Goals uh, sprang really in a way out of the pen of Kofi Annan. Uh, he delivered them to the world. Of course, he had uh, teams, advisors, the conferences of the 1990s. But uh, in the Millennium Declaration, he put uh, forward uh, certain propositions, the world adopted them. Uh, then they were informed later on, oh, within that big declaration, you adopted eight goals. Those are the Millennium Development Goals. Here they are. This time, we're saying, no, no, it's not going to be uh, sprung that way. It's going to be the result of deliberation. And we're living in a world of high distrust right now. Uh, the poor countries, in many cases, feel this environment. Well, we know we're getting hurt, but this is a trick to close the door by the rich countries who have polluted the world and now telling us there's no space for growth. And so that level of distrust means that even a term which one would have thought would be pretty anodyne like green economy became a big cause of, of controversy uh, in the lead up and at Rio plus 20. So in this sense, reaching goals is uh, the first difficulty. I've suggested four basic pillars, uh, one on ending extreme poverty, the second on social inclusion, that means an economy that works for all and a society that works for all, third, environmental sustainability, and fourth, good governance for sustainable development, the commitment of governance, not only of government, but of corporations uh, and of universities and of other organizations to be responsible, deliberative, transparent, open, accountable for sustainable development. I hope the world can agree on some rather basic formulation like that and then put it back to the governments and say, OK, here's some general propositions. What are your plans, your goals within this global context? Now, we have a lot of space to uh, close in order to reach even that. There's another problem, though. Suppose that we reach uh, agreement on the goals, then we have <laughs> Yes, another uh, hill to climb. How do we meet them? And the Sustainable Development Solutions Network aims to be a, a new, cutting-edge, global networking, partly online, partly face-to-face, -face, uh, that will empower local and regional and national problem solving with the best science, the best technology, and access to decision makers, experience, demonstrations, and other places of the world basically with the idea of ratcheting up by an order of magnitude the intensity and quality of problem solving around these issues. And not just for the next year or two, but I really mean for the next generation. So this project of uh, Ban Ki-moon, uh, it's under his auspices, is to help get that uh, global problem solving started. But certainly our idea is not a one or two year project, but to help put in motion something that for a generation provides a base for absolutely serious brainstorming, inspiration, and participation. I want to draw in students from all over the world. Uh, I want young people to say, these are our goals. We know what to do. We're part of Engineers Without Borders. Uh, we're studying sustainable development. I'm a young sustainable uh, engineer, uh, uh, engineering student and so forth. So that this becomes a worldwide effort because it can be as exciting as that. It can be an organizing principle for uh, the young generation and ought to be. This is their great challenge. And finding solutions is possible, hard, and I think also thrilling, uh, a, a great possibility. And, and, uh, and, and it's even going to be fun to do, because what uh, human ingenuity can come up with uh, is, is often absolutely thrilling.